Good morning, Mavell. Time to find you a place to sit down. We want to welcome all the visitors today. Let's give our visitors a hand clap of praise there. Now let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory, you had a great week, I hope. It's time to worship the Lord this morning. We, we're coming believing God's going to do something great this morning. How many believe God? How many came expecting God to do something? Amen. Hallelujah. You got a scripture? <laughs> I think I was supposed to have somebody up here to read scripture. And I... Brother Jerry's going to get us one. Just use this morning's. <laughs> Make yourself Good morning, Mount Vale. Oh, that's that's not like you're in the house of the Lord. Good morning, Mount Vale. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? I said, isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? All right, if you would, stand to your feet. It is a glorious, glorious day. Uh, he said, use this morning's. I guess he liked what I preached this morning. It is a great, great day. I am so happy to be in the house of the Lord. Before I read the scripture, I got an announcement. Stop playing for just a minute, buddy. Stand up to your feet here. Y'all see this young man right here? He's going to do something for me tomorrow night. Y'all know coffee in the Word, right? I said, you know coffee in the Word, right? He is going to be on Coffee in the Word tomorrow night. He's going to bring somebody. He is going to be doing Coffee in the Word for us on a special edition. Y'all tune in. Y'all make sure that y'all aggravate him like you aggravate me. But you make sure and tune in for him tomorrow. I, I think he may even bring his daddy. Are you going to come? No? All right. Anyway, the scripture for today is Romans 12 and 1. I enjoyed preaching this morning because it's talking about giving yourself to the Lord. Amen. How many of us are ready to give ourselves to the Lord? Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If you have it in your mind that any time that you are ready, this altar is ready for you. The Lord Almighty is ready for you. Sacrifice your body. Give all. Give your heart, your mind, your soul over to Him Almighty. Amen. Give yourselves. Give the Lord. Give God Almighty a big round of applause because today and every day belongs to Him. Thank you. If you can just remain standing for a little bit, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just want to remember Brother Philip, who's still a little under the weather. We want to remember the new baby. He's having tests today, but I already believe that there's going to be a negative report. We've been praying for that baby for months. Let's just keep believing God on this test today. Amen. Glory to God. Let's remember those that are sick and not able to be here today. And just ask God to save those who are lost and those that need to rededicate their lives, that they'll do it today in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, honor you, and glorify you, Lord. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this service, God. We thank you for saving the lost. We thank you for people rededicating their lives to you. We thank you for the healings, Lord. We thank you for touching our associate pastor, God, and helping him be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray for baby J Javen. And we just believe that you're going to have a negative report on him today and everybody's going to be well and come home. And God, we ask you to heal all those that are unable to be in your house today. And we just thank you, God, for the anointing that is on this service. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Let's worship. like a bird in prison elsewhere no freedom from my sorrow I fell but Jesus came
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Amen. Brother Matt Howell, where you is, sir? Come in. Get up here, young man. Get on your post. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hey, can we make all of our guests and visitors welcome this morning? Let's give them a, a great big Mount Bell welcome. So good to see you. Amen. And Brother Matt Howe is coming. We're about to do a little baby dedication here in just a moment. Amen. But uh, before that, we'll give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in your giving. So good to see you out in the house of the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. Good to see all the guests and visitors here this morning. Hey, how many of you guys on your way in seen our pavilion out there? Does that look awesome? Give the Lord a hand for blessing us. And give everybody that came and worked hard a good hand. Thank you guys for coming out. That was awesome. So normally you set trusses that are 40 foot wide with a crane. Well, the crane didn't start, so we set them by hand. It was a long, hard day. But with the Lord's help, we got it done. We were praying to the Lord, give us the strength that you gave Samson. Y'all remember that? that? He gave us the strength, and uh, we, we got her done. So it's exciting to see what the Lord's doing in our church. New things coming on, and uh, all the guests and visitors here every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. It's wonderful to see the Lord moving in our church, isn't it? Hey, uh, me and uh, the boys, you know, I do the boys' ministry from, uh, from 9 to 16. If you got a young boy, bring them. We'll teach them about the Lord, teach them how to work, teach them how to be young men. But we're a little upset about the pavilion. I'll just tell you, that, that kind of made us guys mad because it took them so long to build the pavilion, we turned it into a basketball court. Now we've lost our basketball court, so y'all got to have picnics under it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to build us our own basketball court. So uh, once we get all that buttoned up, we're going to work real hard, and uh, me and the boys have been trying to raise some money to, to build a half-court basketball court just up next to it, and then we'll build a little playground. So there's a lot of stuff going on coming up. Uh, so. If you just want to write us that one check and save us all the hassle to half-court basketball goal, just see me after church. We'll get with Shelly and, and get it taken care of. If not, we'll raise it uh, one piece of firewood at a time, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, give the Lord a hand. He's doing a lot of wonderful things, isn't he? Growing, we're doing a baby dedication this morning for my family. Little Jevin was just born, always babies being grown into the church. It, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I have one little boy of mine, Matthew, uh, he's, uh, he's always asking me why. He wants to, know to, wants to know the answer to everything. Every time we're doing anything, why, 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 why? And I always try and answer him. I don't want to be like, just because, just because. But sometimes that has to be the answer. Sometimes I have to tell him, just because I said so, because my thoughts are a little deeper and older. I'm, I'm 25, he's three, so I think about things a little differently. We think about the Lord, he says... My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So a lot of times he has to deny us things and he can't tell us the answer to every question that we want to know because our little old minds just cannot comprehend and cannot understand that. And so I think when you think about giving, if you guys want to go ahead and bring the plates out here, a lot of us kind of get frustrated and disheartened a lot of times when we struggle to give, we don't have to give, or we look and see why others are able to give more, why it seems like the Lord's blessing them more. But understand, church, that He's the author and the finisher of our faith, okay? It means He's writing our story. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere. He sees our future. So the things that He's denying us for today may be to bless us for tomorrow, right? So He sees all things, and He's working all things together for our good. And you can see right here at Mount Vale, all the things we got going on, all the young families being born into God, all the souls saved, all the families changed, all the people delivered, all the sick that are healed, the lame that are healed. That's what you're giving to. That's what you're showing to. And, and the Lord's only going to give through people that He can give through. That's why you see Him blessing the church, because the church goes out and gives and, and gives it back. We don't bottle it all up and keep it right here. Pastor's not making a huge salary. The church don't have all kinds of money in the bank. We give, we give, we give. And the Lord only gives through people He can give through. So think about that as you're giving. If you wonder why you struggle financially, why you have a hard time paying your tithes and offering, are you blessing Him? He's only going to give through the people that He can give through. So be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's our commandment, right? Love God and love people. So love people with your giving. That's what you're doing. You can see it. Let's pray over the offering and bless it. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we love you so much. Thank you for all the great and wonderful things that you're doing here at Mount Vale. 
Lord, thank you for helping us to raise the money, Lord, and blessing us with the pavilion. Thank you for the things that you're going to do in the future here at our church. Thank you for the souls that are going to be saved. Lord, help us to be good stewards of what you've given us. Lord, we pray that you'll be with Kevin and Lisa and little Jevin this morning, Lord. Thank you for making that baby whole and complete in the name of Jesus. There's no problem with his lungs or his heart or anything. That he's wonderful and healthy and he is your child and your hand is upon that family. Lord, bless this offering, God. Increase it, multiply it tenfold, Lord God, for the increase of your kingdom so that souls might be added to heaven one day. And all these things we ask in the name of Jesus. And the church said... where our goal is for souls. I am Lisa. We are so honored that you have joined us in this service. If you are a first time guest or visitor, we are so glad that you are here. So glad that we have an exclusive welcome gift out in the foyer just for you at the Connections desk. If you have any questions about our church, find a First Impression team member by looking for those wearing the green lanyards around their necks. Now check out these upcoming happenings. It is almost time for this year's annual Valentine's Day Banquet. It will be held on February the 12th at 5 p.m. The cost is $30 per couple. Please register on the Church Center app for this event where you can also pay. Or if you would like, you can pay on the kiosk or in person as well. The menu for this year includes baked spaghetti, tossed salad, baked potato, a roll, and a dessert. There will also be fun games and prizes as well. Please plan to purchase your tickets by February the 6th so that those coordinating this event can plan accordingly. Don't pass on this chance to make that someone feel special. The Call to Serve Ministry weekly trainings are scheduled to start on Sunday, February the 6th at 4.30 p.m. in the Family Life Center Room 200. The meetings will be held every Sunday at the same time and place through the month of February. Please get the word out. Look at these lovely Valentine baskets up for auction in the foyer. The Set Apart Youth Ministries is hosting a silent auction that will end on Sunday, February the 13th at 11 a.m. Don't miss your chance to be the winner of one of these baskets filled with love. Are you looking for a place to connect, for a place of discipleship and a place of encouragement? If so, then Mount Vale has a small life group that will fit your interest. Some groups are already in operation and others are starting in February. These groups will offer a way to get in the Word with Bible studies. They will be an extension of our discipleship and a way to help you reach that next level and walk in the Lord, all while in connection with fellowship with others that share your common interests. Some groups will meet in person and others through Facebook or will be virtually held. See Pastor Philip Ruth or another group leader if you are interested in being a leader of a small life group or to get more info. Visit the Church Center app to view all groups and to see who hosts that group along with info on meeting times and places. You can do this by clicking on the app. Go to the groups icon at the bottom, then scroll down to the small life groups link and click on the group that interests you. From here, it will open up all the group details and then you can click on request to join that group if you would like. So go join a group and let's connect and grow together. Here at Mount Bell Church, we believe each one can reach one. We are saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. Join us now as we continue with praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Amen. Brother Matt, where's Brother Matt at? Would the family start making their way this way? Come on up. Amen. Hadn't done a baby dedication in a little while, but uh, looks like we got a whole bunch of them coming up real quick. Like, you know. Amen. And if you're not expecting a child, amen, and you want one, just go back and get you a drink out of the fountain back there. It's a magical fountain. Praise the Lord and <laughs> Amen. Come on up, family. Amen. I always say this, but uh I always say this, but uh you know this does in no wise uh impart salvation to the child, amen. 
But what this really is, is a commitment on behalf of the family. Amen. Come up here, Mama, Grandmother. Come up here. What are you waiting on? Amen. Where's your dad at? Is he in the bathroom? Okay. Well, he'll be up here in a minute. Amen. He'll realize everybody's up here. Amen. Joey, where's Joey at? He's hid in the back. Come on up here, Brother Mark. Waiting on you, buddy. Love Brother Mark and Sister Brenda. They've been dear friends of Mount Vale for a lot of years. Can I tell one on old Grandpa right here? I got a good story. How many want to hear a good Grandpa story? I got a good one, I tell you. Uh, when I first be became uh, when I first became the pastor here, uh, Brother Mark was coming here, his family, and uh, he became unemployed. And, uh, and almost 18 years of pastor, and he's the only guy I ever seen do this. But he said to me, Brother Mark did, he said to me, he said, he said, I'm going to work for the Lord. And uh, he said, um, I want you to give me some things to do at the church. He said, I'm not going to charge the church anything. He said, I want to do it because I know the Lord's going to give me a job. And he said, and I'm going to work for him. And he said, the Lord, the Lord take care of me. I'm going to take care of the Lord's business. Amen. And I don't know, I don't know how long it was, a few weeks there, but man, I mean, we had to clean this parking lot in the whole place, man, around in here, and everything that needed to be done, he was he was taking care of it for us, and guess what God did, just like he said, God just blessed this man, and his family gave him a job, and sustained him till now, can we give the Lord a good praise for that? <laughs> Every young and you got's going to outgrow you, man, you know that? Praise the Lord. Amen. You reckon that little fella let me hold him here in a minute? You think you would? Now I'm gonna I'm open this up to mom and dad first. If any of you guys want to read one of these scriptures or grandpa or somebody, anybody. Brother Mark, you wanna you wanna come? Being a being a grandpa here. Come up here. Praise the Lord. Ain't God good this morning? I'm leaking a little bit this morning, but, uh, you know, God said he'd give us our heart's desire. And uh, it's my desire to see my family in church. Not only in church, but being a, a part, taking a part and doing the part. It's one thing to say it, to another thing to do it. And my family's doing it this morning. And thank you, Pastor T.H. I love you, brother. Yes, sir. Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is His reward. You know, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. and All of us come from God. And we're all miracles. And I have responsibility, and so does my son and his wife, and my family has responsibility to raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. We have that responsibility to lead them. We can't make them, but we lead them to God, to the Spirit. And I love you. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else before I finish out these scriptures want to read one? Why are you ducking back our Joe for? You won't look at me, will you? All right, verse 4 said, As arrows are in the hand of mighty man, a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Deuteronomy 6 and 7 said, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Matthew 21, 15, and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said unto him, hearest thou what they, these say? And Jesus saith unto them, uh, yea, or yes, have you not read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected? 
praise. And our last scripture today is 3 John 1 and 1 through 4. So the elder under the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Stand with me just for a moment. Amen. And I wanted to say this and clarify this. Amen. We, uh, we, uh, we do not do baby baptisms. Amen. We think that's reserved for after the fact that they come to know Christ. Amen. I think it has to be a personal decision on their part. And this does not impart salvation to the child, but it's a, a commitment of the family and the church. I'm indicting you in here with me, amen, that we're going to raise these babies and this baby, little Benjamin, amen, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I was, I was talking to some of the fellas yesterday. They was doing most of the work. I was doing what old people do, just what I could, you know, and trying to help over there. And uh, I was testifying to some of them, and I said, you know something? I said, if the Lord don't come, back in our generation and I wholeheartedly expect that he will I think he's coming I think we're sitting on the cusp of the coming of the Lord amen but if he don't amen I know there's been a lot of generations thought that and that generation come and went on and I think we are the generation but if we're not I said we're building out here a habitation for the people of God that after we've left this world amen and went into eternity that they'll say somebody loved the Lord enough here in this area. There was a move of God so strong in this area that they built a place on the outside of the church just to meet and fellowship and come together. Amen. And you know what? It may very well be this little fellow right here. He may, he may grow up to be the pastor here one of these days. Amen. And Benjamin too. Is his face red? Look at him, look at him, look at him. <laughs> can, I, can I hold a little fella? Oh my God. Oh my Lord. He already outweighs you, brother. <laughs> can I get my counts on ladies, leading ladies and everybody up here? You want to preach, little man? Golly, what's this baby weigh? 20? Wow. How old is he? Man. Farm living, man. It's a life for me. <laughs> it's a chunk, yeah. Hey, I want as many as can gather around, amen. Stretch your hand this way, and we want to pray for little Benjamin. This is what we're going to ask God. How many can just say my life would have been a whole lot better if I hadn't got messed up in some things when I was young? Ooh, Lord, I mean, the devil meant to kill me, amen. But you know something? It was 23 years old. I met the Lord, amen, and he changed my, he changed my life. He changed my eternity. But you know something, I want, I'm, I'm praying this young man right here gives his heart to Christ at a young age. I, you know what he could be? He could be a prophet to the nations. We don't know. He might be, this guy right here might be the next Billy Graham. We don't know. Amen. We do not know. Amen. And you know something, it's our, it, it's, it, it, it's our duty, amen, as mothers and fathers and the church, amen, to pray that these little children grow up. Don't put any restrictions on them and let them do what God has called them to do. Amen. I'm not calling him. Amen. I don't know. He might just be a door greeter, but he might be the next evangelist that rocks this world. Amen. Stretch your hand and pray with me and for, and for little Benjamin. Father, we love and bless you. We're so thankful, God, for this baby. And God, we ask you, Lord, that you would move mightily upon little Benjamin, God. Even now, Lord, right now, Lord, he hears and knows and sees things, God, that he, that he can't even explain. But God, one day it'll be it'll be known to him what he's seeing God and I'm asking you Lord to reveal yourself real to him at a very very young age God that he would get saved Lord and that he would serve you all the days of his life that you'd keep him from the ways of the world God you'd keep him Lord away from alcohol away from drugs God away from pornography God away Lord from the things of this world God let him have a heart God let put something on the inside of this young man a hunger God to serve you all the days of his life use him mightily God in this 
earth. And God, we come together as a family and as a church, and we make commitments today, God, that we together, Lord, will see, Lord, that this young man hears of you, Lord. We will teach him of your ways, God. Keep your hand upon him, Lord. Keep your hand upon this family. Bless them and move and minister, Lord, on every child in this building, God. Don't let any child in this building, Lord, leave this world, Lord, not knowing you as their personal Savior. Lord, we commit little Benjamin into your hands and look to you, for there's none, God, that's greater than you. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's give this family a good hand clap. We usually stand them down here, but we won't today just because. Amen. Amen. Thank you, family. Amen. We usually stand them down here and shake their hands, but for obvious reasons, we won't do that today. Amen. Please be in much prayer for uh, the lady you just saw on the screen, just had the little Jevin. Amen. Uh, he is here. He has made his debut. Amen. And now John Ray is no longer uh, uh, in that house, the only kid in that house. Amen. So let's be praying for them. Brother Kevin was sick at his stomach. Also, uh, be praying for him. He thinks he might have got food poison. But did anybody, I mean, I have this question I need to ask. Did anybody come to the, to the house of God to worship the Lord today? I mean, like, I mean, like. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, sitting there watching other people. I'm talking about you get involved and, and lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And you get involved and be thankful to the God that saved you, that delivered you, that has fed you every day of your life. Amen. Up until this day. And we'll continue to feed you until you leave this world. Amen. And we all meet. Amen. At the marriage supper of the Lamb and he'll feed you again. Would you stand with me and let's worship the Lord today.
Of the good. 
goodness of God this morning. I want you to look to your neighbor to your left and say, God has been faithful to me. Look to your neighbor on the right and say, God has been faithful to me. He's been faithful. He's been good to all of us because I know I've said this before. If he's not been good to us, then we wouldn't be standing here in this service this morning. Amen. So I want us to sing this again. Because this is a testimony. We sing songs about praise. We sing songs about different stories, you know, different things. But this song is a testimony of the goodness of God. Because all of our life, no matter how young, no matter how old you are, all of our lives, He has been faithful. We can all say that, that He has never failed us. Man has failed us. Family has failed us. Friends have failed us. But God has never failed any of us. So I want us to sing this one more time. with thankful hearts, with thanksgiving that all of our lives He has been faithful. Here we go. All my life, come on, sing it now. All my life you have been faithful. Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise in the house. Amen. Scripture comes to my mind. Romans 5 and 8 said, But God commendeth his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Come on, somebody. When I, when I was doing everything contrary to him, amen, didn't know him and didn't care to know him, amen, he was feeding me, he was giving me breath, he was doing you the same way, amen. You ever thought about that car wreck, it should have killed you and you didn't die, amen. Have you ever thought about those times, amen, in life that you had all those close calls when you was all, you were out and away from God and God just spared your life? It's because all your life and all mine, amen, he's been faithful, amen. Come on, sissy. I just want to be real quick, share a quick testimony that something happened to me Monday. As y'all know, uh, yesterday I turned 36. Um, but it has been a battle. Uh, well, Monday I started having a real bad headache and feeling dizzy. Well, you do get a little scared and nervous. Well, the next thing, my left arm went numb. My mouth was numb. My lips were numb. I couldn't speak. I couldn't hardly get any words out. And they thought I was having a stroke. Well, you know, that's kind of scary because my 30-year-old sister died of a heart attack. But I started praying as much as I could in my head, Scripture over me as much as I could. And do you know they ran every test that they could run? I had no stroke. 
I had a real bad migraine, which they give me medicine. And within minutes, I was healed and I only stayed at the hospital for four hours. Let me tell you, if you don't think God can't do it, whoo, try Him. Try Him. Because I thought I was leaving this world this week. But God had other plans. Love you guys. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Amen. Uh, before we get, go ahead and turn to the book of Genesis if you want to. Amen. Genesis, I'm going to read the first chapter, uh, of, or the first verse in chapter 7, the first verse in chapter 8. Amen. I'd like to, hey, let's give all the guys and all the people that came out and helped on the pavilion to work yesterday, let's give them a big hand. Amen. Uh, they did a tremendous job. Hey, today, if you're a minister on any kind of level, or expect to be, I expect to see you at 430 up uh, in uh, the children's church. It's the room 200. Is that right? Amen. And we're going from, today, today we're going from 430 to 520. Amen. I've got another meeting. I've got to be at it at 520 across the hall but uh if you are want to participate in any kind of ministry in this place amen anything to do with the word song whatever i want you to be there amen and i'll try my best if you'll come and be real faithful i'll try to get you through this thing in about three or four weeks it's just about an hour a week surely give me an hour a week to somebody pour into your life talk to you about a few things amen also coming up very very soon is the valentine's banquet Some of you fellas, man, y'all going to be divorced before you're 40 if you don't do better than that. Amen. Amen. Uh, hey, listen, I'm, I'm asking you to get involved. Jump in, get a ticket. Amen. If you can't, come volunteer. And let's make, it's going to be a real good, we're going to have a lot of fun. Amen. Get all the couples together and have some fun, play some games, have some good food. Amen. Good fellowship and give away some good prizes. All right. Genesis chapter 7, if you're there, say amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Please continue to pray for Kevin and Lisa and Brother Roger, amen, Brother Stacy, Brother Philip, just a whole host, amen, of uh, ones that have been sick, amen. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thine house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, and God remembered Noah. Look, verse or chapter 7, he's walking them in. I'll show you a little illustration in a minute. He's walking them into the trial. And, and, and it seems like sometimes in the trial, things get so out of hand that God has forgot. But watch this. And one chapter later, it said, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water assuaged. Let's pray. Father, today, all of our life, you've been faithful. Lord, you have truly, truly been so, so good to me. Good to everybody in this world, Lord. You've kept us, Lord, when we, Lord, when we weren't worthy to keep. Lord, you fed us when we was hungry, Lord. You clothed us, Lord, when we was naked. You, Lord, you gave us a place to live, God. You've always took care of us. And God, may we never forget the good things that you've always done for us, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said... Amen. You might be seated. Give our visitors and guests another good warm welcome. Amen. Glad to have you with us today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Brother Brady, get up off that thing. Come over here just a minute. Help me just a minute, would you? You just, uh, you just stand at my door, all right? You stand at my door. I'm going to the office and sit down a while. And uh, you talk to these people. If you want to talk to them, you can. I'm going to go in here for a few minutes anyway. And, and uh, get me a drink of Coca-Cola or something. I don't know, but... Uh, the problem that we have is, is when we're in the, in the heat of the battle and in the trials of life, amen, we, we realize, amen, that we look back and hindsight's twenty twenty, but we have, we, we, we're not able to see toward the future. We're, we're not able to see that the God that's always kept us will be the God who keeps us, amen. We, we've, we've never, ever, ever really, we, we, we go brain dead on God, I should say, amen. Every time we walk into another trial, instead of realizing it's another level, until we realize that it's another level that God's trying to bring us to, another place of faith, amen, uh, we, we want 
with that magical faith, amen, that just casts out devils automatically, that lay hand on the sick and pull them out of wheelchairs, anything wrong with that, but you got to grow to those levels. You can't get there all at once, amen. And sometimes, amen, God allows storms in our life, amen. If Brady will knock on my door every once in a while, I'm going to let him go sit down in a minute, but he needs a knock or something. I mean, he's standing, he's standing at my door out there. Y'all see him out there? And, uh, the thing is, is here's the thing that I saw in these two scriptures. As I was studying yesterday and last night, this morning, and reading over what I felt like the Lord wanted me to bring for you today, amen, uh, it's, a, it, it's, the new, it, it's a new beginning. It's the new you in 2022, amen. I want, I, I want God to bring me to a new place. I want to be to a new place that I'm not bowled over by every wind of doctrine. I don't want to be, I don't want to be bowled over by every trial. Uh, you know, so can I just tell you this, amen, uh, uh, it's time that the church comes to a place that we see every trial and every test as an opportunity for God to show up. I want you to know today, amen, that I feel like that when I walk into the trials and tests of life, and I do, amen, as I walk in those trials and tests of life, the, I, I realize that God allowed me there. I realize God's trying to show me something. I realize that God is trying to bring me closer. I realize that, that, that Brady stopped knocking on the door. Okay. And, uh, but see, here's the thing that, uh, here's the thing that chapter 7 said about God. Watch this. Watch this. Now, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Here's the thing that the Bible said about God. God, the Bible didn't say that God said to Noah, going in the ark. What God said to Noah was, there's going to be this huge storm that's going to come. There's a huge trial on the horizon. And, and this is what God said. God, God didn't say, you go in the ark. But here's what God did. God said, come in to the ark. Now get out of my office. God said, come in to the ark. He, he said, this is what God said. God said, you're about to go through the storm of your life and I'm going to be inside the ark of safety with you. Amen. Here's the problem that we have is, is everybody goes through storms. Everybody goes through trials and tests. Amen. And problems in their life. Amen. And what we do every time is, is we forget that it was God that was with us before we got in there. And the God that said he would never leave me nor forsake me, but be, would be with me all the way to the very end. He He's the God, amen, that's going to be with you in this storm. I, 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 want, I want you to understand with me today, amen, that I believe that God is trying to do all things new in 2022. He's trying to bring a new you out, amen, a new you that will believe God, that will stand through tests and trials, amen, that will go through these things knowing that God is working all things together for the good, amen. Not all things are good, but God's working all things for the good. Verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 said, and God remembered Noah. Now God was in the ark, and now God, uh, one chapter later, amen, it's not, it's not that God left him, but he said, God remembered no one ever living thing and the cattle that was with him in the ark. Amen. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. Noah had just came through the worst storm of his, of, of the world. The world, the world has never saw a storm as bad as what Noah came through. I know your trial is bad. I know it's, I, I know that it's rough. I know that you don't think you're going to make it, but I want you to understand nobody has withstood a storm like brother Noah did. Amen. Brother Noah, the whole world died and Noah and his family was saved. I mean, sometimes in the midst of the storm, we feel as if God has forsook us. When the night has been long and tears have been many, uh, uh, we feel like God has forsaken us. Amen. Psalms 30 and 5 said, For his anger endureth for a moment, in his favor is life. Amen. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy, I want you to know that comes in the morning. I, I want you to know you may have cried last night, but there's joy on the horizon. See what says, I don't like doom and gloom preachers. 
years. I don't, I don't like, I, I saw, I put this video up on my Facebook of a little, of a little black lady that got up and just rebuked the whole Christian, uh, uh, the whole Christian United States. And she said, I'm so sick of turning on, uh, the, the television and seeing so many people preaching prosperity. She said, anybody can see that the coming of the Lord is nigh. And she said, somebody needs to get with the program and stand up and preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you believe that, give God a good praise this morning. I know it's been rough, amen. I know the trials of life, amen, have waged a war against you. I've never seen so many preachers and people living in a spirit of fear, amen. I, I want you to know, amen, I told them, amen, I told them this morning in Sunday school, I don't know what kind of variant they're going to come out with, but I ain't scared of it neither. Somebody said, how you know? Because I ain't afraid of the other ones either. I'm not making light of it. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying that people have not suffered. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is, amen, if they come out with a variant that everybody got it turned into a werewolf, I wouldn't be afraid. I'd get up and go and do my thing anyway. Why is that? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. I come to tell you today, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. I come to say this in your hearing today. Amen. That God has a plan in your life there's a purpose in your life and God will fulfill the purpose if the devil cannot steer it out of you amen amen there will be a joyful morning come back to your life if you'll hold on to the Lord watch this Isaiah 49 14 said but Zion said the Lord hath forsaken me and my Lord hath forgotten me can a woman forget her suck, uh, sucking child that she shall not have compassion on the son of her womb yea they may forget yet will I not forget thee behold I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand thy walls are continually before me somebody here this morning is in the storm and needs to know that needs to be reminded of Noah somebody needs to understand that God didn't forget Noah no sir no ma'am God God got in the boat, in the ark, if you will, and went with him. In Acts chapter 27, Paul is facing a storm. It's not as bad as Noah's, but it was bad enough for Paul. Amen. And Paul was in a storm called Eurachlodon. Amen. And it was a typhoon, as according to everything I can study out about. It was a typhoon that hit. He had already warned them not to go, not to sail. Amen. He was actually a prisoner on the boat. Didn't really have a lot of say so in the matter, but in verse 20, 27, or verse 20 and 27 said when, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away I want you to understand with me amen it has to get darker before the light comes it, the, it, look, can I tell you it's always darkest before the dawn it always looks hopeless until hope shows up it looked like amen in human history that the hope whole world would perish one day but I want you to understand there was a proclamation that came out of Bethlehem that said there's a son that's born amen his name shall be called Jesus I want you to know it was as dark as the world had been in history at that moment in time and all at once there was a light came on all at once the hope of all generations showed up in a little manger in Bethlehem all at once amen the world that was going, amen, the way of the world and going to hell a hundred miles an hour, got light, got hope. Can I tell you today, I don't know how bad it is. I don't know where you're at, but I come to explain to you today that it is not hopeless. I came to tell you this morning that the Lord said to me in the midnight hours, he has never left you and never forsaken you, nor will he. You ought to give him a little praise right there. Oh my goodness. Acts 27 said, but after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not loose from Crete and have gained this harm and loss and now I exhort you to be of good chair. The wind is still blowing, if you can get it with me just for a minute. The rain and the lightning and the thunder is still rolling. Amen. There's still no hope. And they're exceedingly tossed. Meaning that boat is just all over the place. Nobody can control the boat. Amen. And he stands up and he said, I exhort you to be of good cheer. 
Can I just tell you, I don't know what you're facing, but I exhort you to be of good cheer. I want you to understand if you keep looking at the circumstances and situations that you're in, all you're going to get is darkness and no hope. But if you'll rise up above and you'll see that God has a plan, if you'll understand with me that all things are working together, if you'll understand with me that God, amen, is trying to fulfill a purpose in your life. Sometimes God lets storms come. He let it come. He let that storm come to Noah. He knew the storm was coming when Paul got there. And Paul stands up when the lightning is flashing and when the thunder is rolling and the rain is pouring out and the wind is about to turn. To, and he said, be of good cheer. I, you know, if I'd have been sitting on the boat, I'd have probably said, Paul, have you lost your ever-living mind? Can you not look? See, that's what we do. We look at the circumstances around us. We make the evaluation and come to the assumption that there is no hope and that God don't care anymore and God has left and surely this trial will be the one that takes me out. I come by to explain today. I come by to bring some good news. I came by to exhort you to continue in the faith. I came by to tell you that right on time, God is never early and is never late, but he's always on time. Amen. Be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. Amen. But don't forget this. In the midst of your storm, you got to find a place to pray. It's time to spend some time with God in the storm. The only way to your new beginning, the only way to get all things new is spending time with God. Now watch this. Now it's going to touch your neighbor and say he's probably fixing to get on your toes. He won't get mine because I'm living right today. Uh, Verse 31 said, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. It's pretty simple, isn't it? See, watch this. 2022, it's time to make up your mind. You got to make your mind up. Paul said in the worst storm of his life, the wind had not ceased to blow. They would have promised him anything to stop all the storm that was going on. Amen. But right in the midst of the storm, Paul said you can't jump ship. Paul said you can't jump and run off and leave God right in the middle of a storm that God's trying to work something in you. You know something he's doing? He's working on you and he's working on me and sometimes, amen, he has to let it get dark, amen, so you'll appreciate the light. Sometimes, amen, he has to let you get in need sometimes so that you will appreciate the abundance that's coming later. I want you to understand, amen, that Paul said except you abide in the ship. I don't want to be mean this morning, amen. I am a little bit mean sometimes because I was raised up in the old church a little bit, you know what I mean? And I was raised up in the old church, amen. If you missed a service, and you was in trouble. I got, I, hey, listen, I had a tooth pulled one time and my, I didn't get to preach for three months because I had a tooth pulled, amen, on Wednesday and didn't show up. Hey, you, you wouldn't like my pastor, I'm just telling you right now, amen. So he taught me faithfulness. And this is what Paul said. Paul said, you cannot jump ship in the storm. He said, stay in the ship. He said, if you don't stay in the ship, you'll surely be destroyed. If you jump ship right now in this terrible typhoon that you're facing, you will be sucked under and destroyed. But if you'll hold on to God, amen, we have a promise from God that he'll be with us all the way, even to the end. Watch this. Noah built an ark for 120 years. When God shut the door, it didn't start raining right then. How dumb do you think he felt? He builds this big old boat. Amen. He builds this big old boat. And then all these animals start coming. And you got to be, I I guess you'd have to be particular. You wouldn't want to put the lions uh, next door to the lambs, would you? I mean, I don't know. And for the love of God, I don't know why he let termites and flies on there. I'd have killed them rascals when they come marching up through there, wouldn't you? And mosquitoes. Praise the Lord. But, but here he is, and he's got all these animals. And how many would just believe with me that there probably wasn't no litter box for a lion that big, a kitty cat like that? It probably began to stink in there. Now all the people are walking by and say, what's wrong with that dummy? He started a zoo on a boat. He thinks it's going to rain. It ain't never rained. He's, and he's just sitting there in the boat. Watch the television, I guess. I don't know. Amen. It was one week later. 
You know something? Can I just tell you this? God don't work on your timetable. He's not a genie in the bottle. He can't rub the bottle and say, oh, Jesus, give it to me right now. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Amen. You, you can't do that. You got to wait on God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's time that you and I learn how to wait in the middle of a storm. It's time for the church people to stay in the boat. A lot of people would have said, you know what, Noah, you lost your mind, man. I ain't sitting in here with these stinking animals. It, it smells bad in here, man. And I know we, I know we got some good, we got some good steaks in here because you, you, you brought a few extra cows and stuff. And I know we got some good eating in here going on, but I can't even cook it if I do it, burn the boat down. I'm getting off the boat. You're crazy. It ain't rained. It ain't done nothing yet. Had Noah and his family left the ark before the rain came, they would have been destroyed. Paul said, except these, except these stay with the ship, they cannot be saved. I want you to know with me. People, people get mad at me. That's okay. Uh, I, I realize that the gospel was so controversial. Amen. When Jesus preached it, they killed him. And this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot have faith without faithfulness. Amen. And you got to understand with me the way that faith comes is faith comes by hearing hearing by the word people tell me all the time I can live as good at home as I do in the church I used to get mad till I figured out they didn't live right when they was in the church neither and if you don't want to come to God's house why would you want to go to God's heaven I don't know I don't understand I just know this that he saved me when I was lost I owe him everything he paid a debt that he didn't owe I owed a debt I could not pay and now I'm a servant to the king of love today because of this great gift. Somebody needs to make up their mind in this storm. If you're going to jump ship, you won't make it. You won't make it. I, I, Hebrews 10 25 said, Not forsaking the assemblies of yourself together. Talking about in church, if you start missing, it's not long till you quit. Amen. Amen. Uh, watch this. And it said, And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the waters are swatched. Wind in the Hebrew is always ruach. It says by resemblance breath or even violent exhalation. By resemblance a spirit. Ruach means when God breathes out. The wind of God. God began to breathe on uh, yeah, oh no, in the middle of his storm. God, the breath of God began to move, although the winds was blowing contrary to them, but, but the wind of God began to, to, to blow. Amen. When you start over, when you start over the first thing you need to do is wait on the wind of God. I don't know how long they were there before God allowed them to come out, but every time in the scriptures, when the wind is blowing, uh, something changes for the good, if you will. Exodus 14, 13, Moses said to the people, fear you not stand still see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you that day for the Egyptians who you have seen today you shall see them again no more forever can I tell you just before the wind begins to blow it's going to look it's going to look hopeless it's going to look like it's over with but God calls in verse 21 said and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind a ruach and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided the word wind is the same and, and God exhale then his people were delivered when God begins to breathe on the situation and he's breathing right now on it he's moving in your life and you can't the wind you think has come to destroy you but it's only God that's exhaling on your situation to help you through the trial that's in your life I want you to understand with me I'm saying to God breathe on me one more time Lord let your Holy Ghost power come one more I need a refreshing to go all the way to the coming of the Lord. I don't want to burn out. I don't want to, I don't want to burn up. I want the breath of God in my life, in the storm, on the mountain, in the valley. I, you, we need the breath of God. Amen. Ezekiel finds himself in a place of dryness. Preachers. Oh. Sometimes it's going to be a dry place for you. Sometimes you're going to dig and scratch and cry and pray and fast. And, and Ezekiel found himself. Ezekiel 37 said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. 
And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the valley. And lo, they were very dry. God took a prophet to a valley of dry bones. Amen. Listen to me. God takes Christians, go through valleys and trials and tests of life. But he don't take you there. Amen. It's a teaching experience, if, if you will. It's a time to learn something, if, if you will. Amen. It's when you're going through these things. And this is the problem today. People have been dry so long they don't even expect God to move anymore. Well, I used to praise the Lord. I used to have the victory. I used to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, and one day, amen, one, one day you'll realize, amen, that God means for us when we come to those times, it's time to do some self-examination and saying, God, am I where you want me to be? God, am I in the right place? Am I in your will that you can fulfill your purpose in my life? God, I, I need to know if there's something in my life you don't like, show me, Lord. I'll get it out right now. Old timers used to pray in them altars over there and I'd get in and listen to them. And they'd say, oh God, shine a spotlight on my soul and show me if there be any wicked way in me. Can I tell you, if it's dry, it means that God is about to do something. When it gets dry, God wants to show you it's time to seek him again. It's time to make him first and foremost in your life. Children of God, Jesus is about to come. We're living. It's wars and rumors of wars. Come on. Pestilence, that's sickness in divers places, earthquakes in divers. There's earthquakes all over this more now than ever in the history of the world. And we're living on the cusp of the coming of the Lord. And some still ain't made up their mind if they're going to serve Him. I come by to exhort you to continue in the faith. I come to tell you if you're dry, find a place and pray through until the winds of God begin to blow in your life again. Amen. My great God, the Presbyterians would have nodded. They went, I'm not against Presbyterians. Ezekiel 37 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Somebody sitting in this place today, he said, I don't know if I'll ever get out of this place I'm in. I don't know if I'm going to die in this valley or not. And I answered, Oh Lord God, thou knowest. And again, he said unto me, Prophesy. Upon these bones and say, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Go, God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause, there's my word, breath, to enter into you, and you shall live. It's time to speak to the dryness in your life. You know what? Sometimes I preach some of the best messages, amen, and you're not invited. I, amen. I give in my own offer and answer my own altar call because I'm preaching to TH. And sometimes I have to get, I get alone, amen. Ain't nobody there but just me. And I lock the doors and I preach some of the best messages, amen, to me, amen. And I, I never get offended at the preacher when he's preaching to me because, and he's pretty hard on me, amen. And you know what happens is, I, and I begin to prophesy to my own self and say, TH, you're going to make it. TH, you're going to come up out of this. I, you know something? Can I just tell you this? We pile this building up over here in the corner of that field over there and a thousand times, amen, during that time the enemy would come and say, you made a fool out of yourself and you made a fool out of God. He said it ain't never going to be built and ain't nothing you can do and you're fixing to lose everything because you heard a mew brand in a far field, if you will and I want you to understand, I'd stand up in the middle of my life and I'd prophesy to my own self and I'd say, T.H., you know you didn't have the money to buy the building to begin with. T.H., you knew and God knew you don't know how to build nothing. Ask him, guys, I helped out there. Yes, I had no idea what we're doing. I just do what they tell me. Amen. I didn't know nothing. I, and, and, and in the middle of my life, when the enemy would say, "You need to leave in defeat, tuck tail and run," before they begin to laugh at you because you started it and now you can't finish it. But I want you to understand. Every time there was a few times I sat down and cried. There's a few times I said, "You're right, devil boy. I messed it up bad." But one day, one faithful day, I felt the breath of God come back to me, and I stood up in the midst of my own life, and I said, "It was God." that called me. It was God that told me to build the building. It was God that gave us the money to buy the frame. It'll be God that finishes it. You need to tell the devil it's time that it's to God I live and to God I die. It's God's and it's not mine anyway. Somebody give him a little praise. Hallelujah. Genesis 8 3 and it said uh, and the waters return from off the earth continually and after the end of 150 days the waters were abated can I say this and I'm almost I'm almost done can you believe it they didn't put me a clock up there so I'm going to preach they put me something up so I don't know what time it is 
So if uh, we don't get out here at 3 o'clock, it's those people up in the... I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> uh, you didn't uh, get in this. You, you didn't get in this in one day. I, I know I told you a story before, but it, some of I heard it. If you don't know John Abbott, he's a fine Christian gentleman. I love him to death. I will never follow him in another cave as long as I live, though. Because uh, we went uh, we went in his cave, and uh, I should have known when you had to, uh, what do you call that, repel down probably from my highs at down into the, I thought, wow, man, this is wonderful. I thought as far as it was going. And we go one hour and a half. I've never seen such darkness in all my life. We well, an hour and a half in there, and we come to this we come to this cliff that's underground. And John Abbott could take you if you wanted to go, but I'm never going back as long as I live. And that, and that cliff, we shined our lights. I, I, I'm thinking it probably went a hundred feet on down, and at the bottom there's water down there, water running into that thing. And uh, I was just so glad to be at the end of the trip. I was looking for the elevator out. I said, uh, Brother Abbott, uh, how we get out of here? You know what he said? Just like you came in. I would have probably thrown him off the cliff, but I didn't know my way back out of the hole. Amen? I was so tore up. Man, you're talking about upset. We, we, it took us three hours to go in and out of that thing. It was very, very dangerous. I'd have never went... Had I known how bad it was. And you know something? I don't know how long you've been in this fight you're in. But you didn't get in it in one day. And you won't, you won't, you won't get out in one, in one moment's time. And what you have to do is you have to give yourself hope while you're still in. I had a hope when I was looking off of that bluff underground that I would see the light of day again. My daddy was still alive back then. He was standing at the mouth of the cave fixing to call 911 and send the EMTs in because he thought for sure we'd all perished underground. He didn't realize that I had an hour and a half in, took me an hour and a half to get back out. And you know something? Here's the thing about these trials and storms that we're in. We didn't get there in one day. We didn't get there in five minutes. And it, sometimes God walks you every step of the way out. Trust the process you're in. Philippians 1 6, Brady's going to the music, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. It's God's, it's God's business to perform this thing in your life. All you have to do is be faithful. You, can I just tell you this? You don't need to be afraid of anything. And you shouldn't worry about anything but be concerned for the lost. Because God handles all the affairs of men. And what an appropriate song they just sung all my life. He's been faithful. And I want you to know that he's not changed his mind about you yet. He loves you unequivocally. He thinks you're to die for. He won't leave you. But you can't leave him. You can't jump the ship now. Paul said except these abide in the ship, they can't be saved. I'm not hyper-Calvinism. I don't even apologize for it. I don't even believe in it. But I want you to understand, I do believe that God is faithful. One more little scripture while you're standing. Revelation 21, verse 3. said, And I heard a great voice out of heaven said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4 said, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Verse 5, this is my verse, watch. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. You know what he wants to do for you this morning? He wants to make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. You know what he wants to do this morning? He wants to make you new again.
He wants a renewed hope in him today. I don't know who you are that has lost your hope this morning. It's going to be all things new in 2022. Brand new in 2022. Bow your heads with me just for a second. Come on, some of you ladies. Prayer walkers are coming. Some of you ladies have our little sister right here. All things new in 2022. Can I tell you that I'm not going to stand up here and tell you you won't face storms. All I'm trying to tell you this morning is that when you do face them, now you'll have a renewed confidence. As long as you stay with the ship, you're going to be saved. You're going to, he's going to take care of you. Hey, can I declare unto you this morning, he's not forgot who you are. He's not forgot you. Hey, can I tell you this? He may have allowed these things just to remind you of who he is. Amen. That's, that's what I think is going on. Would you come? While heads is bowed and eyes are closed, saints of God praying. Would you come prayer walkers is walking so you don't have to walk by yourself. If you're here today and you've never been saved, I'm opening the altar for you first and foremost, ma'am or sir, that you might come and give your heart to Christ today. Start your journey with him that will lead you all the way to heaven one day. And I'm, I'm also giving the altar call for those that are in the storms of their life. Amen. It was God that invited Noah into the, into the ark with him. It was God that remembered Noah and all the animals in the ark. And he's not forgot you. Would you come? Would you step out of your seat and just bring this struggle, this trial, this, this fight you're in. Bring it to this altar and say, God, I will not fear anymore. I will not. I'm not I'm not abandoning ship. I'm hanging on for all that it's worth. And I'm never giving up on the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Would you come? Saints of God are praying and the altars is open. Would you come? You that are in the storms of life, bring it and lay it on this altar. And say, God, come what may, I'm never giving up. What Come what may, I'll hold on to my faith. Because there's always hope in him. Come to the only hope that's in this world that ever was and ever will be. He's hope today. Would you come? Come on, some of you brothers. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on, come on, hurry. Sing, sissy. Raise your hands and worship him. Come on, let's worship the Lord. If he's ever brought you out, y'all lift your hands. If he's ever made a way where there seemed to be no way, y'all just lift your hands, just wave at him. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. Still waiting on you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on. It's just, it's just saying to God, God, I ain't going to give up. I know you're going to do something. I acknowledge the words that were spoken over me, and I'm not giving up, God. I know you're not done with me yet.
I've asked him to do one more song before we're dismissed today. I really feel like it. the Lord's still moving and dealing with hearts in here today. And uh, can I just tell you this? I've been sitting out there. When I'd give everything I had, somebody throwed me a, just just throwed me a rope, throwed me some help, some hope. Just and uh, and a lot of times I didn't get it. And I want you to understand, there's hope for you today. I want you to understand these things that happen in your life is not at all because God's mad. It's only to draw you to so you'll come back to Him and see Him in all of His glory. And I've asked Him to sing one more little song. And if you feel like you need to come, I'm only, I don't want to extend it longer than it has to be. I'm not that kind of guy, but I want you to have the opportunity you need. Amen. Because it's, it's a million miles from where you're sitting to this altar. I know. I've been back there. I know. They're going to sing one more song and then we'll let you go. That the cross would not get heavy Or the hills would not be hard to climb He never offered victories without fighting But He said help would always come in time And just remember when you're standing
many are glad that God showed up in this place today. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just one more quick announcement before we dismiss in prayer this morning again. Just remember the minister's meeting today at 430 in the other building, room 200. Just uh, pastor wanted me to uh, make sure that I encourage everyone to come out and attend to that meeting this afternoon. Amen. Let's all bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, we thank you again for your goodness. God, we thank you that you're still showing up in this place today. Thank you, Lord, for coming down today and blessing your people in a mighty and special way. God, we just give you thanks. We give you praise for all that you do in our hearts, in our lives, Lord Jesus. And God, we ask you that you continue to check us each and every day, Lord Jesus, that we will always depend on you for every need that we have in our lives. And God, we ask you right now that as we go to wherever we go after this service today, Lord Jesus, be with us, guide us, and direct us until we come back tonight to worship you and lift you up and praise your holy name again. And we just thank you, Lord, for everything you've done and what you're going to continue to do. And the church said, amen. God bless you this morning.